All right, hello. Uh, I'm uh, James Goodwin. I'm from uh, Nokia, and I'm going to be talking about the uh, Metacarta GeoSearch Toolkit for Solar. Uh, it looks like a lot of stuff, but I'm going to go relatively quickly uh, and uh, basically give an overview of what Metacarta is and what we do uh, and uh, how we're a part of Nokia and then what the toolkit is and why we did it. And then hopefully a brief demo, but we may not have time for that. Uh, so Metacarta uh, has been around uh, for, I think, since 2001 originally. Um, and our focus has always been on uh, geographic search. And the idea is to sort of combine uh, text search with searching on geographic references and, uh, and that kind of thing. And we have a lot of customers across uh, the public sector, government, uh, and uh, energy and media. Uh, all people who have content that they want localized and they want it done quickly and accurately. Uh, and recently we were, we've been acquired as a wholly owned subsidiary um, by Nokia. And which, by the way, uh, Nokia asked me to put this slide in, and so I did, uh, which is uh, Nokia's hiring. And uh, there are folks out in the lobby um, that have uh, recruiters and recruiting cards and that sort of thing. Um, so Nokia uh, also has a great uh, interest in location search and location because of uh, the billions of cell phones that folks carry around and use services that uh, search on location. And so part of their goal in acquiring Metacarta was to uh, have us work with them on that. So Metacarta Geographic Search, um, what we do uh, First is actually build uh, the entity at the bottom, which is the GDM, which is a, uh, it really represents two things. One is a machine learning model uh, that is a model trained to recognize uh, geographic references in text um, based on a, a really uh, carefully tagged uh, uh, training set. And then a thing we call the Gazetteer, which is a huge database of geographic entities and all the different names that they might have and their coordinates. Uh, and we use that to implement a couple of services. The GeoTagger uh, essentially takes any kind of text document and uh, tags all the references uh, for uh, geog geographic references, but it also assigns them each a confidence level so you can actually have the same uh, geographic entity tagged with multiple possible references. So we can look at something that's, um, you know, Cambridge in the UK and Cambridge in the United States. And in the context that uh, you get it in the document, it could be either one. And so we give you the relative confidence of those two things based on other context. Um, and so it's not just a matter of, uh, you know, tagging one document to one location. It's actually tagging all of the geographic references and returning their offset in the document and uh, and what they uh, what they refer to. So the goal, the end goal for us usually is to um, is to produce depictions like this, where people uh, plot their search results onto a map, and uh, and you'll notice the variety of different ways that we can refer to geography, like the tunnel or the Casey Middle School, uh, or the word Boulder. Um, and all of those things, uh, now when you're looking at a map and you've created a bounding box implicitly by scaling the map to a certain degree, um, is another set of search criteria that's just implicit in the search. And it also allows you to, to, um, to put more search results on the screen and make them more useful because now you're conveying a spatial uh, meaning to them. Uh, and so you can see clusters of, of references in a certain area, and you can zoom in. And those things are now collected implicitly by geography. So Metacarta, currently, their product is, um, is, a, uh, is an appliance uh, model. So it, we basically sold a, a Debian server uh, that contained all of our indexing and all of our geotagging. 
And so as part of that process, um, we've run into customers who wanted the same technology but unbundled and integratable with other things. And so one step that we took recently was to unbundle our geotagger as a standalone process on uh, Red Hat. And, uh, and so in the process of doing that, we had customers who said, yeah, but we still want to search. And so we wanted to be able to integrate with a search engine that we could also deploy. And so that got us to working with Solar um, and building a plugin uh, for Solar. So the functionality that we defined uh, is basically allow the, the geotagger to tag the documents as part of the indexing process. Um, we wanted to uh, make those geographic references searchable in Solar. We wanted to be able to express the queries as a combined geographic query. And uh, we also wanted to be able to add additional filtering because uh, our geotags come with not just latitude, longitude, but frequently they will come with um, the province, the country, um, sometimes a type of entity. And, and frequently folks uh, who use our software want to be able to filter those things in their queries. So we want to push that out through there as well. And then we wanted to provide uh, a ranking algorithm similar to what we have on our appliance, which uh, infers a higher relevance for terms that are closer to the geographic reference and closer to a geographic reference specifically that's inside the bounding rectangle so that you get documents rising to the top that are not just good text matches, but they're good text matches inside that geography with, with close, close correspondence of the terms. Uh, so one thing that was sort of one of my goals was to um, was to not have to go in and, and change solar a whole lot. So I tried very hard to use uh, the, the architected in extension points to solar. Um, and so I created uh, an update request processor factory um, that allowed us to plug in our processing with geotagging into the up update pipeline. Uh, and actually, you'll see later, I plugged it into the extracting pipeline because that was really handy because we had a bunch of gzip content that we wanted to index, and I just sent it straight through. Um, but basically what it does is it takes the source document uh, that's been converted, uh, the update request processor that we wrote, sends it out to our service to be geotagged, uh, and then uh, it does two things. One, it indexes uh, a field. It creates uh, dynamic fields in the document, one of which is uh, QTM terms. QTM is uh, it actually could be quad tree codes or QTM, uh, but they're basically codes that take the latitude and longitude and transform them into a hierarchical string uh, that can be searched with a, with a prefix query. Uh, and we insert those as a separate indexed field. And then we store the other geographic metadata in the, uh, in the solar data store. Uh, and essentially, that's the indexing side of the, the, the flow. And then um, on the query side, uh, basically we implemented our own query parser plugin uh, because we needed to take control of the, uh, the scoring algorithm and, uh, and also do retrieval of uh, some of the metadata in order to compute the georelevance calculation. And so uh, basically user query comes in, the query parser plugin creates one of our query objects. Um, we, we actually use a child query that you provide to us. So we essentially can piggyback on any kind of other query processor you hand to us. We run that full text query, and then we do the geographic. Uh, we actually add on a, a filter query uh, on the QTM terms. And then we score and filter that whole result and generate the ranked results uh, at the end. Um, we use a cache currently because we're doing a lot of data retrieval uh, because initially I didn't uh, store the, the uh, extra data for some of the georelevance in the index, but uh, it looks like coming up I'll be able to push all that into the index, which will be very handy. So these are just, uh, this is just sort of saying in words what I just said about the other thing uh, on, the, on the chart. Um, so I don't think we need to, I need to go over that very much. 
Um, and again, uh, what we do is uh, we, we generate uh, parallel fields to the, uh, to the fields that you ask us to do the geographic uh, indexing on. And so these are the suffixes that we tack on to the geographic uh, field names to store the uh, additional content. And uh, the, the, the top set are the set that are used for the relevance calculation. The bottom set are additional metadata that you can either include or not based on an option, and that can be filtered on. And so this is actually what a query would look like. Um, basically, you select our query parser uh, by uh, using the exclamation point, and then you pass it a set of geographic terms, and then you give a, a standard sort of full text query um, uh, to piggyback on, and then we do our thing from there. Um, and you'll notice that I include, uh, you know, uh, a minimum population uh, threshold. That's one of the metadata queries. So uh, geographic re relevance is uh, essentially what it does is it, it is, uh, it, it's an idea that originated in our appliance product and it basically takes into account the term position of the geography versus the term position of the query terms. Um, and it's, it uh, looks at, it's a factor of the distance in the document and the, um, uh, and it's also uh, based on the weight of the, of the geographic entity and the confidence. The weight has to do with where in the document we found the uh, geographic reference in the document and the confidence has to do with um, how sure we are that it is what it is. And, uh, and then there's dilution factors for terms that are very far away from geography in the document or documents that have an enormous number of um, geographic references because there's always lists of things that, and you don't always want to see that as your first result for everything. And the other thing that's key to understanding is that um, one of the problems we have is that you can't really pre-compute this number because the geographic relevance actually is, is based on the bounding box that was queried. And so it has to be done late in the process. And the filtering, um, basically, uh, because either method that we use for generating the um, the selection on geography, the filter, either QTM or quad codes, um, they don't create a perfect covering of the rectangle. And so we also have a little bit of post filtering on latitude and longitude um, to make sure that we throw out any references that are uh, just over the edge of the bounding rectangle. Um, and then the filter query does most of the selection for us. Uh, and that's based on just creating the shortest the, the smallest set of prefix queries that we can to cover um, the bounding rectangle. And so that, uh, that typically isn't more than like, uh, I've seen probably 20 or 20 to 50 prefixes. Um, and then the score um, filters ag also against um, uh, ge the extended geographic metadata. And that's basically just kicking out documents based on uh, it, you can put in a criteria on, you know, I only want to th see things from France or uh, I want to see things from cities over a certain size, that kind of thing. Um, so this, this is basically just to show it's relatively simple to install. Um, so in the solar config, uh, you need to add it to a request processor chain. Uh, and you'll notice that, uh, so this one I'm, uh, I create one, and we basically configure it to point at the host for the geotagger, wherever that service is running. You have to identify the fields that you want geotagged and indexed, and then whether you want to have the extra geo metadata. There are, there are some other parameters that you can set as well, but these are the basic ones. And then essentially, in, a, in one of your, ex, your uh, request handlers, you just need to point the, re, the update processor at that chain. and uh, and that essentially hooks up the, uh, the, uh, the uh, indexer the, for geo-indexing. 
Uh, and then there's uh, configuration for the uh, query side is essentially just uh, installing the cache and configuring it. Um, and uh, the cache size, uh, at the moment, it should be, it's in the units of objects, and it should be probably on the order of your largest uh, expected found set. And then um, the query parser uh, is just plugged in, and it has similar parameters to the, uh, to the uh, indexing side. Basically, we just have to know the, the fields that you have indexed for geography. This is kind of an eye chart, but this is essentially just, um, we have field definitions to define uh, how the metadata uh, dynamic fields are going to get stored or not. And this is stuff that, uh, within some bounds, can also be configured, so you can, you can choose to not store some of these and, and that sort of thing, depending on what features you're using. Um, and we have a couple of field types that we use because we store um, some of our binary data as a binary vectors. Um, okay. So I'm going to try and demo if I can find the thing. So this is our, I can't see this on my screen, that's why I keep looking up there, it's, it's a slight Linux sharing screens problem. Um, so uh, an example, I'll zoom back out again, and uh, I should go to road, be a little bit more visible. So um, just to demonstrate sort of the geo-relevance thing. So you notice that, um, that we get a lot of uh, hits. And the, right now, we've got the highlighting set up. It's, not, uh, it's highlighting the geographic terms, just so you can see um, what, the, uh, what the terms are that, uh, that caused it to select you know, one of these documents. Um, so what you can do is, uh, as we zoom in, We can resubmit the query. And now we get a, a more uh, localized result. And this is about Boston, and it's about public schools and about the school boards in, those, in that community. Um, and so the, as you get closer in, you get documents that come up that have you know, clearly more relevant to the current search area. See. Right. Oh. I guess so. Okay, um, so our current status with this is that um, we're currently in a uh, private uh, alpha release of it, and we're refining with the folks that we're working with the performance and the storage overhead and the memory and, and the ranking and all of that. Um, and uh, so if you have uh, any uh, questions or, or, or you want to look at more information about us, uh, there's some references here on the presentation that will get posted. And, uh, and uh, David Smiley's actually uh, the guy that's working with me on the alpha, and he's been a great help in uh, advising us. So um, 
So that's about it for me. Um, if you, uh, so if there are any questions, I'm happy to take questions. Thanks. Let's see, is that a question back there? I actually have a couple, but I guess I'll hold off because I saw a couple others have questions. Um, so just two. Um, how does this tie into Solar 1.5's native support for um, geo data? And the other one, is there any, in, in the API, any assistance to, uh, to figure out the bounding box? For example, if I, in the search term, I write Boston, for example, that it automatically figures out um, a sensible bounding box? Um. <laughs> So it, it doesn't tie into the um, into the one five geographic stuff. Um, when I first started looking at it, um, there really wasn't enough there there to um, to adopt it. Uh, but now there may be, and uh, so we probably take a look at it again. I know that the customer is uh, interested in it as well, so that may happen. Um, so we basically did our own implementation of 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 geographic searching, uh, so we can probably look at the overlap and, and use it instead. Um, as far as, um, what was the second part again? Sorry. The second part was about figuring out the bounding box. Uh, um, we don't really, uh, that's sort of more of a reverse geocoding uh, problem, and we pretty much don't do reverse geo geocoding, but there are lots of other uh, projects out there that you could use to do that, um, and there are there are services on the web that do it and that sort of thing. So, are there any plans to make part of it open source? Uh, there are. We're just trying to figure out what parts of it. Um, and uh, the uh, one one question about it was was whether we just publish it or not, like we did with our uh, our connector framework. Uh, which has become the Lucene connectors. Um, so uh, we'll see. Uh, it's just we're so early in the process right now, we haven't decided from a business point of view what we want to do with it. Other questions? Oh, you've got another one. I mean, this ties a little bit into his question. So you don't have a business model figured out yet for this? Correct. Yeah, it, it, the thing is, is that um, basically it's come from. Uh, there are a number of um, entities in the in our customer base that are interested in unbundled solutions from us, and we're trying to figure out exactly what they'll buy from us, what they want as services, what they want as open source, you know, and and so it really is tied up in in specific deals that have to happen. So it really has nothing to do with. You know, there's no IP in it that's particularly interesting or anything like that. It's just, you know, a pure business thing. Okay, I have one more. <laughs> um, so, how about multi-language capabilities? Is this, I mean, this this service really works with other languages as well, or just? Yes, uh, the the GeoTagger currently supports, um, uh, I think, uh, let's see, uh, English, French, German, uh, Spanish. Uh, Arabic, uh, Russian, and we're working on other geotaggers in, in other languages that will be available uh, as we go forward. Uh, and so we have, those are all in the pipeline, and they're going to be accelerated because of our work with, uh, with Nokia, because Nokia is interested in uh, worldwide support. Hi. Um, for the gear attacker, um, do you use a proprietary set of uh, geographic data or do you use an open source uh, set? Is the actual uh, geographic database uh, accessible or going to be part of the open source release if there will be one? Um, I believe a lot of the data is proprietary and we've bought it and licensed it from various entities. and. That's what, it's both what makes a lot of it good, it's very high quality, but it also uh, makes it hard for us to release the data because we don't actually own a lot of it. Um, 
So it could be that there's a, an opportunity to make an open source only. We do certainly use a lot of public data and a lot of data that is available from the public domain. So there's a possibility that we could release one that was based only on that content. I don't know that there's any plan for it, but it's, it's feasible for us to do. Does your filtering and that, can you do like uh, shape intersections or if you have route planning, could you s do searches that are based along the things that are along the way, along the route? Uh, underneath the covers, we support um, the, the, the bounding box is actually a bounding polygon. And so we could potentially do, that's one of the goals down the road is to be able to do um, a convex polygon uh, or a well, actually, just a, a generic polygon, uh, you know, that doesn't intersect itself, um, and uh, be able to search within that. Uh, but the the interface to do that and and some of the overhead to generate the covering uh, codes is still under development. So, but we've started from that premise, so we'll see how it goes. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much.